Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Niles. Thank you so much for tuning in today. In this video, we're going to go over a bit of some foundational knowledge on Interledger protocol. Um, first, going to identify what problems it poses to solve and then also going over what exactly it is, how it solves those issues. Also going to be going over how it can potentially provide a uh, a good turnkey solution uh, by leveraging XRP and XLM. Yeah, just as a disclaimer, none of this is financial advice. Um, and in my opinion, knowing the position and what the Interledger protocol can do for the broader blockchain space is an important puzzle piece um, to know and understand so that we can make our own empowered decisions uh, regarding owning certain digital assets moving forward. So the first piece I'd like to share is this Interledger Protocol presentation. And I will link every video and article uh, down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Um, so here we have Evan Schwartz and he is going to share with us about the problems that the Interledger Protocol um, is posing to solve. Not useful for site with Lightning, uh, no, sorry, we only accept this this other one. So really, the main problem, the reason why cryptocurrencies are not useful for payments today in most cases, is that in order to pay someone, you have to be on the same payment network. The flip side of that is that if you want to accept payments, you have to accept a ton of different payment methods because somebody might want to pay you with one of these many options. The traditional payment space is super fragmented. So in every country, there's different payment methods supported. And if you're a merchant, you have to support a ton of different options because you don't want to turn away customers if they come to pay with something. The fundamental problem is that payment networks at their core are disconnected. There are different, different payment systems from banks to blockchain systems, mobile money networks, etc., And all of them are disconnected from one another. This has given rise to a lot of people talking about the idea of the internet of value or internet of blockchains or payments or kind of pick your, pick your favorite term, but it's this, this idea of the internet of, of money effectively. And the reason that we talk about that is because what we need is an internetworking system for payment networks. And the, the word internet actually comes from internetworking. So what, the, what we need is a system that just connects up all of these in the background and just makes it work. So here we can see Evan uh, kind of laying out for us one of the greater challenges that uh, blockchain provides a solution for. Um, and in my vision, the Interledger protocol would be one of these turnkey solutions that really provides an ultimate uh, interoperability and a kind of a standardization for all these different payment mechanisms. I'll come back to the document here and I'll read you um, a few snippets of what they, how they are defining the Interledger protocol from their website. So here's the Interledger protocol and the overview and I've gone through reading here and back on this document I've kind of copy and pasted some important bits and I'll just read them to you now. The Interledger protocol is an open protocol suite for sending payments across different ledgers. Like the internet, connectors route packets of money across independent networks. The open architecture and minimal protocol enable interoperability for any value transfer system. Interledger provides for secure payments across multiple assets on different ledgers. The architecture consists of a conceptual model for interledger payments, a mechanism for securing payments, uh, and a suite of protocols that implement this design. Interledger is not a blockchain, not a token, nor is it a centralized service. Interledger is a standard way of bridging financial systems. The interledger protocol suite can be used among any network of participants, public or private. There is no single network that all parties must connect you to, to use these protocols. The Interledger is the name of a public instance of the Interledger protocol suite, which seeks to provide coherent global financial infrastructure. Ideally, anyone connected to the Interledger should be able to transact with anyone else, each using the underlying systems and currencies of their choice. So here we can see perfectly described a solution to the challenges that Evan just proposed to us in the previous video. 
And so as far as understanding the kind of technical side or the nuts and bolts and how interledger protocol works and performs these uh, interoperable transactions, uh, you can definitely have a look at that previous article where the interledger protocol is describing what it is and how it works. If you also have a look at this video as well, where it, uh, it, there's a presentation explaining the technical side of things of how everything flows together. Um, and then specifically here, um, we can observe how XRP and XLM are being uh, experimented with for being used in this interledger protocol mechanism. And everything will be good money. Um there extremely cheap to send money around it is exceptionally fast you can send that exact payment in three seconds um, and importantly xrp is very very liquid it's traded on over 120 exchanges against over 200 currencies that you can get in and out of xrp with um, and oftentimes on any given day there are hundreds of millions of dollars of liquidity in xrp so it's useful if you actually want to move value you you can move a large amount of value through through xrp Stella, on Stella itself, you have, you know, tokenization allows you to trade all sorts of tokens. Um, it can be CBDCs, cent central banks can issue CBDCs on your platform, if I understand it correctly. Um, yeah. Central banks can issue CBDCs on your platform. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th this is the main thing that. So there we have examples of the IMF specifically talking about potentially using uh, Stellar XLM as a ledger for issuing CBDCs. And of course, we know the position of XRP and XLM uh, in global institutions and in central banks, etc. and governments um, as far as being ledgers to create CBDCs and how they are positioned to transition the financial system bring on institutional involvement in blockchain, tokenize assets, and bring about the adoption of the internet of value. And finally, I have the World Bank mentioning the Interledger protocol in this article. It says, World Bank says Interledger is very promising for the payment domain. World Bank Group calls the Interledger Protocol very promising for interoperability in the payments domain. The World Bank Group, in collaboration with the IMF's Digital Advisory Unit, has published a report on blockchain interoperability that reviews the current research agenda from experiments across blockchain platforms, including Ethereum, Hyperledger Fabric. We know IBM's involvement with Hyperledger, Hyperledger Fabric here, um, as well as their World Wire service, which is positioned to leverage Stellar XLM. Uh, we have Corda mentioned here, and we know their affiliation with R3 um, and XDC and Zinfin, uh, as well as Quorum, Polkadot, uh, and the Interledger Protocol. Developed by Ripple's former CTO, Stefan Thomas, from the perspectives of technology, security, and risk, and legal considerations. We also see them mentioning Quant uh, Network here and the Overledger service that they have. And another core feature that we know both XRP and XLM uh, have to their protocols is super cheap, fast, and efficient uh, transaction speeds um, when compared to something like a Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, pretty objectively making them a superior protocol for implementing uh, widespread adoption and use within the Interledger protocol. And those are the breadcrumbs that I have for you here regarding the Interledger protocol um, and how it can relate to XRP and XLM. There's so much more information to comprehend and integrate regarding the Interledger protocol and its position to provide uh, global solutions to payments. Um, yeah, just following a few breadcrumbs here, definitely further invitation to check out more research on this topic, as well as different protocols um, and digital assets that are affiliated with this payment messaging network system. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, give a subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, leave me a comment. Our Telegram community is available, which you can join in the link in the description below and wishing you guys all a beautiful day.